Hey everyone, it's Mrs. Teal here, and I'm gonna show you today how to create a watercolor technique sample sheet. I've already prepared my sheet with the different watercolor techniques I'm going to demonstrate, and I have all my supplies here ready to go. I've got my cup of water filled halfway up with water. I have a paintbrush. I have a paper towel. I have my watercolor set. I have salt, which I'll need for one of my techniques. And I have a waxed crayon, which I'll need for the resist technique. All right, to get started, I'm gonna begin with wet on wet, which means I'm first going to apply some watered down paint. I can use any color I want. And to water down the paint, I like to actually put some of the paint in the lid of the paint set and then add some water to that. Anytime you want to make up a larger batch of a color and have it ready, and you want it to be all the same value, keep applying more water to the paint in the lid and get a little collection of paint there ready to go. All right, I'm gonna paint this light green on here. To get a flat wash, I always like to paint kind of quickly so that the paint will dry flat. Okay, so while this paint is still wet, I'm gonna now drop in some other colors. I'm just gonna grab some blue here. And in the wet on wet technique, when the paper is already wet, either with water or with paint, you'll see that the color bleeds out. We can go in with other colors if we'd like to. Okay, there you have it. All right, moving on, I'm gonna demonstrate dry brush. So for dry brush, first you need to dry your brush. So I'm gonna use my paper towel here, dry my brush as much as possible. And then to really create texture, I'm actually gonna take the bristles and I'm gonna just gently spread them apart like this. And then I'm gonna grab some paint, I'll go ahead and use some blue here and I'm gonna spread it again. I wanna make sure that it's still pretty dry here. I'll even get a little bit off on the paper towel here. There we go. And the whole idea of dry brush is that you're showing texture. So you can spread the bristles again. Use both sides of the brush if you want. This could be great to show texture of hair, grass, things like that. Okay, I'm going to now get my brush back to a point again. There we go. And I, I just kind of spin it to get it back to a point. Okay, just moving through, I'm going to go to splatter next. Now when splattering the paint, you do need to be careful of your surroundings. So I'm going to move anything out of my way that I, that, that I care about. There are two ways you can splatter. The way that I prefer is to take the paint on the paintbrush, hold the paintbrush steady, and karate chop it like that. This helps you to control where it goes. But some people when splattering do like to have a little bit more motion shown. So another way is to take the paintbrush loaded with paint, pull back on the bristles like a slingshot and fling. That way you get the paint all to go in one direction. But you do have to be careful because the spray can go further this way. So be aware of your surroundings. Okay, next, dark to light fade. And I realize I wrote dart here. Let's fix that, dark to light fade. So I'm gonna begin by choosing my color. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with purple here. So I'm going to apply some purple to one side. This will be my dark side. Applying purple. And now I'm going to rinse my paintbrush, dry my paintbrush. And with a dry paintbrush, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that edge and I'm just gonna start dragging it. Get some more water here. I'm gonna repeat, just kind of drag it out. 
See how easy that is? And I can continue to do that until I'm happy with my fade. If I feel like it gets too dark on the light side, I can always blot some away. Okay, next, color to color blend. I'm gonna be using two colors that are next to each other just so that I get a nice mix of colors. Since I did splatter a tiny bit on this area, I'm gonna use, uh, I'll use purple as one of my colors. I'll use blue as the other. I'm just sticking right between these two right now. So I'm gonna grab some blue first. I'm gonna paint with the blue halfway. Okay, rinse my brush, grab my other color, purple. I'm gonna paint with my purple until it hits the blue. And if I do this quicker so that both are wet at the same time, this will be easier. Now, I don't wanna leave it like this, like a stripe. So in the center here, I'm gonna blend. So my paintbrush is clean right now and I'm just gonna bring the colors together. If you wanna go side to side, you can too. The idea is though, you don't wanna just see two colors, but you wanna see what color is created when the two colors mix in the center there. All right, next, wipe away. This is blotting. I'm gonna grab some red for this one. I'm gonna start by just filling this in with my color. Okay, now while the paint is still wet, I'm gonna grab my paper towel and I'm just going to bunch it up and press. And again, you have to do this while the paper is still wet. This creates a nice texture. Okay, next is stamping. To stamp, we're actually gonna put the paint onto something. I'm gonna show it two ways. One way is to put some paint directly onto your paper towel. So I'm just gonna take the paper towel and I'm gonna grab some paint. Let's just go with blue and stamp. Okay, that gets an interesting texture there. Okay, so that's one way. I'm gonna do another two. I'm gonna grab some bubble wrap. I already have some purple on this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use purple here. So I'm painting the purple paint onto the bubble wrap, and then I'm gonna stamp it by just pressing it onto the paper. Okay, next is salt. So I'm going to grab some paint. Let's go with black. I'm gonna paint with my color. I could use different colors here if I want. Let's have some fun. I'll add some purple in here too. Now, when adding salt to watercolor paint, it's really important that the paper is very wet when you apply the salt and that you leave the salt on the paper until it dries. So here I have a nice little mixture of the purple and black. While my paper is saturated with wet paint, I'm just gonna sprinkle on a little bit of salt here. And you can see immediately something happens, but the magic happens after the paper has completely dried and then you're able to wipe the salt off. So you'll have to wait and see what happens after it dries on your own. Okay, final technique is the resist. You can do this using wax crayons or oil pastels. I just grabbed two crayons here. I'm gonna just do a quick design with white and with orange. Okay, and let's add one more line there. I enjoy using white the most because the results are the most interesting in my opinion. I'll grab some black. Actually, I want to make sure the black is nice and watery too. And you can see that wherever you applied the crayon or the oil pastel, it'll resist and it'll move away. So it, it does not cover it up too easily. However, you do want your paint to be plenty watery when doing this so that it doesn't just sit on top of the crayon. All right, there you have it. We just demonstrated nine watercolor techniques here. Now it's your turn to go ahead and try it yourself. And when you're finished with your watercolor technique practice, you should be ready to begin your project. Now, final thing to talk about though is cleanup. Of course, 
after working on your project, if you have time to still do that, is when you would clean up. But when working with watercolor paint, if you've used the paint lid as a palette, make sure that you wet your paintbrush and clean that off before returning your paint set. You'll need to wipe it down with your paper towel, and this of course can be all done at your seat. Same with bubble wrap. If you used your bubble wrap, either rinse it in the sink or just dunk it in your water and wipe it down. And speaking of your cups of water, be smart at any time if your water starts looking like a juice, then make sure you dump it and get some fresh water. Thanks for watching. Can't wait to see what you guys do.